Hi everyone, this evening I am on a photo walk around central London. It's Chinatown, Soho area mostly. As you can imagine there's quite a few people around so I'm trying to find a quiet space to film there. There'll be less talking to the camera but I'll try and add some voiceovers later on. So hope you enjoy it. My main goal this evening is to practice the shooting at night time. It's not something that I do a lot. So I'm playing around with my settings a little bit, seeing what works. We should get something from tonight, some good pictures. Hope you enjoy. We're starting in Chinatown and it was very, very busy. And I'm just trying to look out for any interesting characters, any interesting moments. And as I was walking past the restaurants, I spotted this couple. She looked like there was something wrong and he was just carrying on eating. So it was just an interesting moment. I'm also looking for sources of light that can help. Shooting in nighttime or in the evening can be difficult. So these restaurants and shops that have their lights around are really useful. Now over to the right, I spotted this street performer who is getting ready to perform or has just finished, I'm not quite sure. But he looks quite despondent and, and I like how that contrasts against his outfit. It's a very uh, eye-catching outfit, but he's in a very quiet moment. And I also want to get a shot from the side to try and capture his face and convey some of that emotion that can be seen there. Now, I just mentioned that the shops and the restaurants and their light sources are really good. And the supermarkets quite often have workers outside that can be quite an intriguing subject. So I camped outside of this supermarket for a while. Unfortunately, nothing came of it, but that happens sometimes in street photography. Sometimes you can capture something amazing. Sometimes you don't capture anything at all. And also, interestingly, there was a group of photographers right next to me as well. You can see one of them at the front here. And it's amazing, once you know that they're out there, how many photographers you do see that aren't just tourists. With this next shot coming up, again, I hung around a little bit because you want to get an interesting photo. You want to get the subject doing something, an action or an emotion, and not just a snapshot. So whilst this isn't a great photo, it was just the, the practicing of waiting for that moment that I think is important. Here's another example of waiting for a moment. I think that smoke and vapes create a good atmosphere, especially over night time with the lights around. Unfortunately, it didn't work out this time, but I wanted to include it and show you what the process is, what, what my thoughts that are going through my head. Here, I had the idea of capturing this person that was backlit and bringing down the shutter speed so the people walking past would be a blur but we'd have this person static. Unfortunately I was a little bit too slow but I do try again later in the video and we have some results.
So we're done with Leicester Square, Chinatown, and we're walking up to Carnaby Street now. Then I'll swim back around through Soho. The photos for the rest of the video are all colour because I feel that they add to the ambience. They give something more than just the black and white. This was quite a funny moment. I had spotted this photographer snapping a picture through the window of the bar staff inside. So I tried to um, still, I mean, get inspiration from his idea um, and do the same thing. But then what the waitress or someone walks over and notices us and you can see me sort of sneaking away. And then I noticed that she is looking out the window towards us. So I decided to leave it. As I walked around this corner, I noticed this car that had blown its radiator or something. I really don't know much about cars, and there was smoke or steam coming out. And with the hazard lights, it was creating a quite nice atmosphere. As I mentioned previously, with the, the smoke and the vaping at night time, it creates a good ambiance. I could see they didn't need help. There was people around helping, so I didn't feel too bad about it. But I just um, walked down a little bit, turned around, and sneaked this little photo. I feel like this junction had particularly good potential because of the light coming from the theatre. It was quite a busy junction, so it was hard to isolate people. I got this one photo that wasn't particularly good, but I think it's an area that I'll come back to. As always, it's good to keep an eye out for interesting characters and figures. And just down on the right, I spotted this lady looking to the shop window. I crossed over the road to get a shot from behind. This was the final little stretch, just heading back through Chinatown. I'd spotted this fruit and veg stand that to me looked quite cinematic. 
for some reason. And I felt it would be a good opportunity to try and capture that effect that I wanted to previously get, where there's a lone figure and the people moving past are blurred. So the first few of these are test shots. And then I got one that I'm fairly happy with, but it's something that I would like to try again in the future. Back at home now, and those of you that have seen my previous videos might notice that this time I've decided to include the settings for each photograph. And this is something I particularly wanted to do for the night photography, just so I have got an easy access record of what settings there were, and it gives me an idea of what sort of ranges I'm looking for, particularly in terms of ISO. So on my camera, I can set a minimum shutter speed and a maximum ISO that I want to go to, and the camera will try its best to stay within those ranges. Anything up to 5,000, for me, is fine. When it gets to sort of 6,400, 8,000, then it becomes a bit more questionable, and certainly anything above that, I wouldn't want to go to. So next time, I can adjust my settings and work it that way. I know that some of the editing software has a denoise option, um, which I don't particularly mind using, but I would try to avoid it if I can and try to get things correct in camera. Just so I'm, I'm not relying on technology to improve my photographs, I want to be able to have those skills myself. So thanks for watching the video. If you've made it this far and you've enjoyed it, please like, comment, subscribe, share. It really helps. Um, I think we're on about 74 subscribers at the moment. I would love to reach 100, so please, 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 and I'll see you next time.